Hi y'all, it's Miss Barker and today we are going to be talking about speed, velocity, and acceleration. So first, speed is the distance an object travels per unit of time. It is a scalar quantity, meaning that we are not going to give it a direction. It doesn't need a direction. And our equation is speed equals distance divided by time. For our general units, we are almost always in this class going to use meters for distance, seconds for time, and speed in meters per second. So let's do an example. A car drives 250 meters in one minute. What is the car's speed? So we are looking for speed. Our distance equals 250 meters. And our time equals one minute, which we can convert to 60 seconds. So speed equals 250 meters divided by 60 seconds. So speed should be equal to about 4.17 meters per second. Here's another example. We have a car drives 24 meters per second for five minutes. What distance does the car travel? So here we're looking for distance. Our time is five minutes. We can multiply that by 60 to get 300 seconds. And speed is 24 meters per second. So if we plug those variables into our equation, we have 24 meters per second is equal to distance over 300 seconds. To get D by itself, we're going to multiply both sides by 300. And so distance equals 300 seconds times 2.4 meters per second. So overall, we traveled 720 meters. Okay, so to help you remember the speed formula, we have a little triangle here that may help. So for our triangle, anytime one variable is on top of another variable, that's going to mean divide. And if a variable is next to another variable, that's going to mean multiply. So all you need to do is cross out whichever variable you are looking for. So if we are looking for speed, we can cross that one out. And distance is on top of time, so we are going to divide distance by time. If we are calculating time, we're going to divide distance by speed. And if we are calculating distance, we are going to multiply speed times time. So in addition to calculating speed, we're also going to need to know how to graph speed. So time is usually plotted horizontally. It's going to be our x-axis. Distance is plotted vertically on the y-axis. And the slope of our line is the speed. So for example, here we have a distance versus time graph with a couple of different speeds. For the first part of our graph, we can take our distance, so that's our vertical change is eight. And we're gonna divide it by our horizontal change of four to get two meters per second. At the end of our graph, we can do the same thing. We can say we had a vertical change of eight, a horizontal change of two, and so we have a speed of four meters per second. And then right here in the middle, we have no change in distance. That means we have zero meters per second. We are not moving for those four seconds. So let's look at some other graphs. For this first graph, we have a constant speed. We know that because it's a straight line. And because the distance is increasing, 
that means that the object is moving further away from whatever our point of reference is. And point of reference is arbitrary, it's whatever you decide it to be. For our second graph, we again have a straight line, so still a constant speed, but our distance is decreasing, so that means that our object is getting closer to our, frame, to our point of reference. But our distance is decreasing, so that means that our object is getting closer to our point of reference. And then of course, for the last one, if we ever have a flat horizontal line, that means we have no speed. Our object is standing still. So let's take some time to read some different graphs. Let's see what they are telling us. So in our first example, we have a flat horizontal line. So our distance is staying the same as time increases. We are not moving anywhere. Therefore, the object is at rest. Here again, we have our distance decreasing, which means the object is moving towards our reference point. It's a straight line, so our object is moving at a constant speed. And the slope of the line is narrow, right? So that means that our object is moving pretty slowly. A steeper slope equals faster movement. And then here we have a multi-part graph. So in part A, the object is moving away from the point of reference at a constant speed. Part B, the object stops, it's at rest. And part C, the object is moving back towards the point of reference at a slower constant speed. Okay, so let's talk about velocity. So velocity is the vector counterpart of speed. It is very similar, um, but in addition to describing the speed of our object, it's also going to give us a direction. So for example, a sailboat traveling at 20 kilometers per hour in a southeast direction, that is velocity. And we are going to calculate it much the same way. Velocity equals distance over time. We just need to make sure and include our direction information in that measurement. So what about when objects don't always have a constant speed or a constant velocity? We know that objects are capable of speeding up, slowing down, or possibly changing direction. That's called acceleration. So acceleration measures how much an object's speed or velocity changes over a certain time. So acceleration can denote a change in speed, a change in direction, or a change in both speed and direction. Acceleration can be positive, negative, or zero. So positive acceleration means our object is speeding up. Negative acceleration means our object is slowing down. And zero acceleration means that we have either a constant speed, so those straight line graphs that we saw in the speed section, or no speed. So our object isn't moving at all, doesn't have any acceleration. The formula for acceleration is going to be velocity over time. Again, velocity is in meters per second, time is in seconds. That means that our acceleration is in meters per second squared. So let's do an example. A motorcycle's velocity at the top of a hill is 11 meters per second. Four seconds later, it reaches the bottom of the hill with a velocity of 20 meters per second. What is the acceleration of the motorcycle? So acceleration is going to equal our change in velocity over time. So that means our final velocity was 20 meters per second. I'm going to subtract my initial velocity of 11 meters per second and divide by 4 seconds. And this should give me an acceleration of 2.3 meters per second squared. So that is how much our speed changed from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill. Notice that it's positive, so that means that our speed increased. If this were negative, that would indicate a decrease in speed, that our object was slowing down. Okay, another example here. A speed skater just finished a race. After she crossed the finish line, she coasted to a complete stop. If her initial speed was 13 meters per second, and her acceleration was negative 2.9 meters per second squared, how long did it take her to stop? So right here, how long did it take her to stop? That tells us that we are looking for time. Our initial velocity is given to us. That was 13 meters per second. 
and we're told she comes to a complete stop. So that means our final velocity should be zero meters per second. Acceleration, we're also given. That's negative 2.9 meters per second squared. So let's go ahead and plug these variables in. So negative 2.9 meters per second squared equals our final velocity, zero meters per second, minus our initial velocity, 13 meters per second, divided by t. So to simplify that top part, we have 2.9 meters per second squared equals negative 13 meters per second divided by time. Now we know we need to get time by itself, so let's start by getting it out from the denominator, move it to the other side. Now we have negative 2.9 meters per second squared times time is equal to negative 13 meters per second. And then we can divide both sides by negative 2.9 meters per second squared to get t by itself. So t equals negative 13 divided by negative 2.9. And this should give us approximately 4.5 seconds. So it took our figure skater 4.5 seconds to come to a complete stop. So just like we did with speed, let's look at graphing acceleration. So here we have a distance versus time graph, so this slope is speed. And it looks like we've got a constant speed moving away from our point of reference. If we graphed the acceleration of this object, it would be a flat line because our speed is not changing over the course of our time. Let's look at an example where we don't have a constant speed. So here, our object is still moving away from our point of reference, but this curved line tells us that we do not have a constant speed. It is not a straight line speed. What that means is that our speed is increasing. Speed is increasing over time. So we have a constant acceleration. So that is it for this time. Next time when we come back for more notes, we will look at the big four kinematic equations. So we're gonna take all of the concepts we just learned about distance, displacement, time, speed, and acceleration. And we're gonna plop them all into a set of formulas.